Good morning guys, hope everybody's doing well. Today we're gonna be installing the Lavender Pro Alpine Edition 5 kilowatt heater. Now, I did another video of my top seven essentials on how to van life. A diesel heater should have been on that list, so this is honorary number eight top essentials. And so it doesn't matter where you live, hot or cold, it just opens the flexibility up for you to travel to someplace cold. Like for instance, I'm gonna be going to Mammoth in my next video and the next video after that is going to be one year of van life so stick around for that let's get into the video okay so you gotta press the down button and the sunlight button up here at the same time it's gonna say H off and then now it's gonna be H on so that means it's priming so here we are Originally, I was planning on running the, the fuel line and the pump right in, in here. And I figured once I close this all down, the cassette toilet's in here, and this is closed, it wouldn't make that much noise. But then on second thought, I'm just gonna mount the pump and the fuel pump outside, because there's actually a lot of space up under the wheel well and, and up in there. So I'll show you that now. Sometimes it takes an army. To install one diesel heater, got the zip ties. Halo, you want to say hello? Hey, baby girl. We got Halo here. Everybody's helping out on the diesel. Absolute carnage. I think every single tool I have out. This is what it looks like so far. This is the wheel well. Out here is the air intake, the exhaust, and then the fuel line. And then the power for the fuel pump runs along here. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit, make this a little bit taller up here so it's out of the way. I, I hate it being in the wheel well, but that's really the only thing I could do. Zip tie it along here. Under here is the fuel filter, the fuel pump, and then it connects to the side. And then there's a hole up in here. Okay, this is where we're gonna put the exhaust right here and cut it with this this is the Milwaukee hole set it has a bunch of different sizes and it comes with an arbor as well okay there we go, nice and clean. Hopefully this fits. Yes. All right. Okay, now time to cut the tubing. So I have a connection here between the two. Okay, tubing's cut. Now time for clamps. So this is how it's gonna look. All right, you can di direct the heat. Inside, clamps are on. Now we're gonna prime the pump, but I'm first gonna go outside and make sure everything's good. Okay, this is not where it's gonna end up. I'm just gonna use this for testing purposes, and I will be tightening up the fuse line and the pump line here. Underneath, pump's at an angle, fill filter, going up into the fill tank. And then I'm gonna snip all these, clean it up. Let's do the first fire up, see how it goes. A few moments later. You can hear it already. The pump is pumping. Fuel will gradually come through here, through this filter. Once I see uh, fuel in here, I can turn off the pump or just turn it on regularly. It's gonna pump down into here and feed its way to the heater. All right, test run. Here we go, exhaust. Make sure this fuel line's away from the hot exhaust, air intake here, and the pump, um, the, the the power to supply the fuel pump is here. Let's go to the other side and take a look. Here we go. Fuel from inside the cab to the fuel filter, up to the pump. You notice there's an angle to it. You need to angle this up towards the diesel heater itself. And here we go, it's fired up. Okay, so here we go, it's on now. Oh, I can already feel it warm. 
but it's just starting up so it's gonna take a little while to get full blast maybe 30 seconds nice and silent don't even hear hear anything on this end the only thing you hear kind of is the fuel pump ticking oh yeah Woo, that's nice you hear it humming a little bit this is on startup it'll get quiet in a bit oh yeah finally success Woo! now time to clean all this mess up there's the control panel see that that's the pump the fuel pump it's on now so don't worry if you don't hear a ticking it's gonna take a little while before you see this little symbol and it means that the pump is working fans on beautiful heat oh my goodness i could not wait for this it's been cold lately so let's turn it on and run it to see if there's any issues before we bolt it down time to mount the heater now that everything is tested and is working properly go ahead and mount it So don't mount it like this, but there is some space in the back, but technically you're supposed to have a lot more. That's why I cut some extra holes here for ventilation and I cut a slit out of this. I'm gonna clean this up just so this can breathe a little bit better. So here you go. This is the air inlet here, the fuel line, and then the exhaust. I just plumbed everything in so I can drop it in that hole there and then um, have another plate and seal it up on the other end. But it's crazy how they are so close to each other. So the fuel line is gonna be so close to the exhaust. So you'll have to route this away from this thing. Otherwise it's just gonna not work out. And this line has to be nice and clear, no hard turns. Ask me how I know. You want a nice smooth, smooth line. If you have to zip tie it somewhere, make sure it's not you know, too kinked. Check out the clamps. I just wanted to show you how good they are. See how that, that operates? When you tighten this down, it kind of does a nice circumference and holds that, that rubber piece. So that just reinforces the idea that every single component in here is better from the clamps to the exhaust to the actual ECU. It has a Kurosera glow plug in there as well um, the housing is waterproof all of the plugs are waterproof and I think the gauge wire in here compared to your cheap regular Chinese diesel heaters that are 10 15 dollars the gauge wires on these are a lot thicker probably one to two steps up on the gauge so again that's kind of the theme of this everything is better and I think the price I got this from AliExpress, it was $220. I thought it was gonna take a lot longer to ship because that's the delivery date. Uh, that's what they said. And it showed up like two weeks early. So not bad either. So um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up now. Wish me luck. It's not an easy job. I don't know how people do this in 30 minutes, um, but it's a, you gotta think about it where you're gonna lay it out you're gonna have to run your fuel line just give you a visual idea right the actual fan the ecu is in here and then here's the combustion chamber and these other components here this is the exhaust this is double wall extruded aluminum and then this is an air inlet this little uh guy right here little nipple is your fuel line and then you have uh, some electronics that plug right into here to power this guy. Um, but real quickly, like a visual heater or the diesel heater, fuel pump, fuel filter, fuel tank, fuel tank, fuel filter, fuel pump, diesel heater. It's kind of making a lot of noise. I'm gonna double check everything, but it's on, it's running, fuel pump looks good, fan spinning,
There's a mountain addition too. No error codes. Okay. This fan's driving me nuts. Why is it not true? It was spinning fine when I took it apart and twisted it myself. It wasn't touching anything. As soon as I turn it on, it starts touching something. Now I know I should have more clearance in the back there, but that really has nothing to do with the fan getting touched. There's the fan. So I want to show you the tank. Here it is. Mounted flat, drilled into the side of the panel here. What's cool about the lavenders is they have a fill uptake that you can drill right into the cap here and it goes all the way down. The other previous Chinese cheaper diesel heaters, they recommend you drill a hole and insert the tube. I'm not a fan of that in case of leakage. But here you go, it goes down the chassis, into the fill filter, into the fill pump, then into the diesel heater. Four main parts, tank, fill filter, fill pump, diesel heater. One of my other videos was how to van life, my top seven essentials. A diesel heater is on that list as well. It doesn't matter where you live, hot or cold. If you wanna be comfortable, it just opens up your flexibility of where you can travel to during the winter. So this is the eighth top essential. Major takeaways from the Lavender Pro Alpine Edition. Every single component on it is better. So if you consider the cost of extra 100 bucks, let's say it lasts you three years, I'm anticipating it's gonna last more, but that you break down the cost, it's less than $3 a month over the course of that three years. I think it's well worth it. You wanna install a good one so you don't have to mess with it, no maintenance required. You wanna set it and forget it and it just works. It's like having central heating in your van, very, very essential. So is it an easy install? No, not really. I would say it's like a medium install. You're gonna have mistakes, but there actually are a lot of uh, videos out there talking about the cheaper diesel heaters. That's why I wanted to do the Lavender Pro Alpine Edition because there isn't that much information out there. So this is absolutely essential. For my notification squad, I see you guys in the comments section early. Hashtag OTG if you're on the go. Next video is going to be one year of van life. Pros and cons and everything that happened. So stick around for that one. It's gonna be a nice and juicy one. I always say I'm gonna try and make videos real quick, but they always end up to be 20, 30 minutes. So stick around for that one, and I'll see you guys next time, guys. Peace.